So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the science of how Muti heals. It goes back to our history with our ancestors. So if you have an understanding of the people who went before you, you'll understand that it's a whole line of people. And these people used to live a particular way where they ingested Muti and they ate, a particular, they ate in a particular way, like a child from birth till he's an old man throughout his life would be ingesting muti. So when you go to a healer and they give you muti and you ingest it, whether it's foreign to your body or not, but because this is how our ancestors live, your body will recognize it because it's, 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 it's encoded in your DNA, it's in your genetic makeup. It is a part of who you are and where you're from and who your people are. So muti instantaneously is recognized by by your body, by your DNA and everything, and that's how the healing process begins. So it's in the biology of who you are as a person that the healing begins, because this is the stuff that your ancestors used to take. So it's also, you are also, um, it's also a continuum, you know, you are, you are taking it forward. You are healing yourself, and like now I'm a woman, I'm taking certain mutis, my children will also inherit those things. They will inherit it from my womb. So that when they live and go on to be their own people, should it be given to them, their DNA will, will recognize it. Or, ah, la hopula like 75,000 years ago, however, 5,000, however it is, this is what we used to eat. And so the healing process begins after the spiritual one. Even in death, the, the, you are healed, you know. Uh, when a person dies, they go through certain rites of passages, which are called death, death rites, with muti. So it's supposed to be something that you live with from the very beginning until the very end. And let's say the next generation comes. They take no muti whatsoever throughout their lives. And then the generation after that, someone says, Ish, but you know we could do this. And then it's done. The healing begins because your memory remembers, the, your ancestral memory starts remembering all of these things. So, ah, here we are once again. You know, so that's how scientifically you start healing from your biology and then the recognition of muti and that. This does, I think, to a very large extent, help us understand why it's important for us to, to take muti, especially as African children. There's a reason why we are told to gaba first thing in the morning before you eat anything, you know, because you are still open up and because food hasn't gone down the stuff that needs to come out of your chest so that you can purge properly. And Maguvalilwe, it's best to do it when the sun is out. Do you understand? Because it's easier to gaba when it's very hot than when it's not. When it's hotter, it's like even when you have a runny stomach and it's hot, you will go to the toilet faster. So any form of purging happens faster when the sun is out. When the sun is closed in, you will have a great deal of difficulty. You will feel like you ate something before gaba. So the best time to do it is when you haven't eaten, the sun is out. Purging is good for you because it clears your... What's this chakra called? Yeah, that, that one. Yeah. The here places. First of all, your, your body is bare of this muti. It doesn't know it. Um, so when you start taking it, the first thing that's going to happen is that your DNA, because it's encoded in your DNA and it's in your genetic makeup, it will recognize it. Do you understand? And over time, it builds up like any other relationship and you will feel better, but over a long period of time. Because you, to start off, you were devoid of it. Your, your defenses were down. You know, you, you are not made up in the way of your ancestors. There's so much that's soiling our bodies, all of us, you know, I, I'm not um, excluded from that. There's so much that we ingest that is so bad for our bodies, that in order to heal, it takes a bit longer than Let's say someone who lives there in Namibia somewhere in the middle of the Okavango or is that in Botswana, who has never touched civilization as we know it. 
that person doesn't even get sick. That person doesn't know, their bodies don't know narcotics. You know, so for them to heal, it's, they don't get sick, man. What do I mean heal? But um, they, they rarely get sick. They rarely, really get sick. And if they do get sick and they consult a traditional healer will give them whatever it is that will make them better. Their bodies are very responsive and quite timey as compared to ours because of the pollution that is inherent in our bodies. And the thing is, we must always remember that as vile as it tastes, it's really good for us. It tastes really quite horrible because it's in its undiluted form. It hasn't been tempered with. It heals. And we lose patience because of the way it tastes. It's so sad that we are sitting here having to do this, which is something that everybody should know anyway. And it's, it's, it's becoming lost and all of that. So at some point, we should keep this information for our children. Because even the trees that we source our muti from now, will not be here 100 years from now. So it's a topic that Gogo Mpo brought up earlier, that other trees are coming up for healing, for the future, because the landscape is also changing and, and all of that. And also asking is important. If there's something that you are not understanding in the consultative pro process, you must ask, so that you, you don't go out there and find yourself gabbing with Muti for the feet, you know, like you were saying, or Muti for bathing. Everybody has their place in the sun and their purpose. So that, let's use uh, our space and our purposes to, to ensure that future generations have what we have now and that they can preserve the knowledge and the wisdom of Africa. I'm very traditional in my approach to my healing. Gogo Tato isn't. She, she's traditional in her own way. Gogo Smenjalo is traditional in her own way because she's progressive. And it's the same thing, it's just different. It's just how I was raised to be this person and how I was purposely designed to be this person. Um, I mean, as traditional as I am, I'm speaking in English right here with you guys, you know. Very well spoken to. <laughs> yeah, you know, but um, what's important is that we draw strength from each other as healers. And that's why, why we are here all together, because I know if I need this, I can call on to Gogo Tato, I'll phone Gogo Smenjalo and ask, because we have created a network for ourselves that help us in our healing journey. <laughs>